Hi, my name is Marcus, I'm 24 years old, and I'm a transsexual from female to male. I've been on testosterone for over four years, and two years ago, I got a hysterectomy. As you can imagine, being a biological female without their ovaries that produce estrogen, and being on cross-sex hormones for a long time, I experienced side effects. No matter if the side effects were predictable or not, I have done a lot of research about why they occur and how to alleviate them. In this series, I'm not only trying to help other trans men, I'm also trying to help women, regular women. Women who are currently experiencing menopause and or have had a hysterectomy. This is a series for biological females who experience side effects due to the loss of estrogen and a hysterectomy. There's unfortunately not a lot of information trans men and women can get, so I'm here to change that. I'm gonna divide all the side effects into episodes and welcome to episode one. Do you experience soreness, tightness, or even pain in your pelvic floor? Do you have a problem emptying your bladder, delayed start of urine stream, or trouble reaching orgasms? Then this episode is for you. Yes, the soreness and pain is really awful, but what's even more awful is how you nearly didn't receive any information about the side effects of the hysterectomy. The lack of information about aftercare, having physical issues and you don't really know what to do about it. And you might wonder, why am I in pain? So let's establish what is the female pelvic floor. The pelvic floor muscles are located between the tailbone and the pubic bone within the pelvis. The pelvis describes the bone in that area where the pelvic floor describes all the muscles in the area. And the muscles in the pelvic floor support the bowel, the bladder, the uterus, if you have one, and the vagina. It's like a hemic-like system of muscles that holds your pelvic organs firmly in place. After getting a hysterectomy, it's even more important to take care of your pelvic floor. The hysterectomy might affect pelvic floor functions, and you might experience a tight pelvic floor. So you might experience pain in your one side of the pelvic floor. What will happen is your hips rotate to accommodate the shortened muscle. You become asymmetrical and that hurts. What can also explain the pain you're dealing with is bad posture. There is a specific posture called anterior pelvic tilt posture. And that's where your butt sticks out, your belly sticks out, and you kind of look like a duck. That's really bad for your pelvic floor and your overall posture, and the posture also explains your bladder and sexual issues, believe it or not. Your pelvis has to be in a neutral position if you want to empty your bladder, but you also want your pelvic floor to relax more. You can't be all tense if you want to empty your bladder. And the same thing applies if you want to achieve orgasms. As you all know, the physical process of having an orgasm is your muscles would be really, really tight. And then at the end, the muscles release, you will have an orgasm. But if your muscles are too tight and they're not able to relax, to release, it ain't gonna happen. The most effective way, in my opinion, to alleviate all these side effects is to do yoga, especially the type of yoga that's called yin yoga. But how do you start doing yoga? Let me ask my expert and my lovely friend, Stephanie, because she has a lot of great exercises you can do on a daily basis. Take it away, Stephanie. Hey, Marcus, thanks for having me on. Um, my name's Stephanie. I'm a yoga instructor, a survivor of a radical hysterectomy. I am a pelvic floor exercise specialist, so I love to help people eliminate pain in their life. And hip pain can cause so many problems and it can manifest into back pain, pelvic floor pain. So unlocking the hips can really not only help you eliminate pain here, but it can also really help you keep your body feeling good and healthy. So here are my top three moves that just about anybody can do. You don't need anything. If you do have a yoga block, it does help. However, it's not necessary. You can use a rolled up towel or you can just modify with your body. So one of my first really gentle ways to eliminate and unlock hip pain and unlock the hip are just to do some cat cows. So we're going to be in a tabletop position and we're going to drop the belly, inhaling, lifting the head to the sky, filling the belly with air. 
And then we exhale, and we put some pressure as we exhale on our hips, like we have a wall on either side of them. And then we pull up very dramatically, like a cat, like a Halloween cat. That's the cat and cow. So the, so the feeling here is going to be putting pressure on each hip externally. So we drop down, inhale, exhale, pressure, very slight pressure on the hips, pushing the earth away from us. I do about 20 of those a day, that inhalation pattern with the drop of the belly and the exhalation. Beautiful. So that's one of my first moves anyone can do, and you're already going to feel that relief in your lower back, as well as some of the energy coming towards the hips. When I'm done with that, sometimes I like to take just a few clockwise hip circles, reverse them counter. My second favorite hip opener is known as the frog. Coming right back down to that tabletop position that we reviewed before where we did our cat cows, we're gonna take the knees, spread them apart. Beginners, you might wanna start here, okay? Up on the hands and just feet here. Important here though, is that we take those feet and we rotate them externally and we shift back so you're feeling those hips start to unlock there so it's fine to hang out here as long as you're pulling that core in you got that external rotation in the in each foot and you pull back yes or if you want a little deeper hip stretch but you can come right back here out pulling in and down knees come a little wider and you can come here. This is where if you have a block and a towel and it helps you maybe get maintain that position better. I like to do this for about three minutes a day, which I know sounds crazy, but breathing in and out and just focusing on each breath softening this right through here. So inhale, and we don't push back, we just exhale, soften into it, let our body get heavy into that position. Keeping just a nice soft inhalation and exhalation and softening and staying for three minutes is going to be perfect. Our last exercise. It has kind of a funny name, but <laughs> it does work and it's known as the dead pigeon. So in yoga we do a pigeon pose, which it can be a little aggressive on the hips because you're pulling this leg out and you're coming down laterally. This takes that same positioning with the leg and we just bring it here, pulling back and pressing that knee ever so slightly away, bringing it in. And again, we're not pushing down on it, but we're just taking a very, very gentle pressure here. I usually hold this for about a minute and a half. I like to do a little self-assessment in between because you'll feel how one hip has gotten much more activated. So it's that same thing, it's crossing, dropping that knee and pulling back. When we're down here, one of the final things I love to do is a really good spinal twist. So taking that left leg down, and then we drop that knee over to the side. You can stay here, or you can take that back leg and kind of come out almost in, if you see, a little kitty cat tail, and then you look with your gaze over your right shoulder. It's gonna feel really good, help decompress back here, also open you up right through here. Again, same thing, about a minute and a half. In, and we drop that right leg down, and we're taking this, and we're just slow, slow as molasses, twisting it over. Sometimes you can get a nice little back pop too, like I just did. And taking our gaze over to that other side. Slowly breathing into it, letting that leg get heavy. To finish off, you can just bring those knees in, and do those same things, those nice little rotations. Really simple, honestly, in under 10 minutes, with just a few poses, you can eliminate a lot of hip pain and you're gonna increase your flexibility, eliminate low back pain, and you're gonna improve and help lift the pelvic floor at the same time. So appreciate you always having me on to share my passion with you. And I hope that some of these moves can help you feel some relief and um, get you out there living the life that you deserve too. Thank you, Steph. I really appreciate your help. Not only is it important for you to do hip opening stretches, 
you also have to do jaw and neck exercises. Did you know that the muscles in your jaw are directly linked with your pelvic floor? Be aware of your tense in your neck that makes you tense in the jaw because if you relax the muscles in your jaw more, if you do something about your jaw issues, your pelvic floor will thank you. Fix your posture. It's super important to have great posture. You should not only fix your posture when standing up or sitting down, you should also fix your posture when going to the bathroom. Buy a squatty potty that will lift your feet up when going to the bathroom, even when you're just peeing. And this is where it's important for you to relax your abs. Because what will happen is, you relax in your pelvic floor, you would go to the bathroom in a more natural position, and it might help you emptying the bladder as well. When it comes to working out or like exercise, walking is actually really good for you. Because there will be a lot of rotation in your hips, so you will practice your hip mobility. And the last advice I want to give you is practice diaphragmatic breathing. I think that's what singers do on a daily basis, but you should do it too. And that's where you breathe through your stomach and like lungs instead of just breathing through your chest. It will help you relax in your pelvic floor and it's really comfortable too. My issue is I'm extremely sore in the right side of my pelvis. I have trouble emptying my bladder and I have to pee a lot. What I do to alleviate these symptoms is I actually do yin yoga every single day. If I don't do it every day, I feel so stiff and I'm just a beginner, but now I'm addicted. It hasn't removed my soreness slash pain, but I feel like it's going to eventually. I just started, so. I'm trying to fix my bad posture. Now I'm aware of it and it's hard. I use the squatty potty all the time and I think it's amazing. I highly recommend it. And the last thing I wanna say is, I've had a really bad experience with the trans doctors who gave me the green light to get the surgery. As you all know, a hysterectomy is a very common surgery. So the people who did my surgery do it all the time. When I woke up, the surgeon asked me, so what are you gonna do now? I usually prescribe estrogen to other patients, but you don't really need that. So what are we gonna do? And I'm like, all high and confused. I don't know. And then she said, well, I'm gonna email your trans doctor, you know, the doctor assigned the trans clinic and ask her what to do. The next time I talked to the trans doctor, so I wasn't at any checkup, physical checkup, I talked to my doctor over the phone where she was like, so I got an email from your surgeon. What are we gonna do with Marcus? What is his future health gonna look like? And then my trans doctor said to me, did you know what I responded with? No, I said. She said, keep your hands off my patient. And then she laughed. She didn't write that literally, but to make fun of my health, to laugh at my future health? Great. I got offended. I said, well, this is a big surgery, so it makes sense that they're worried. And she was like, ah, yeah, but I mean, the only thing you have to do is to be Marcus. Two years later, I have chronic pain. I have chronic soreness in my pelvic floor. Being Marcus didn't work. I'm trying really hard to be Marcus, but <laughs> It hurts every day. For some reason, just being Marcus doesn't really solve my bladder issues, but maybe I'm not trying hard enough. I get it. I'm pretty sure that other trans men have had the same experience as me, but I also know that regular women deal with this stuff. Again, the lack of information. You know, after the surgery, I didn't receive anything. I didn't go to any checkups. I didn't get any flyers any estrogen cream to treat vaginal atrophy, nothing. And I know that I'm not the only one and I know it's not just because I'm trans. Again, I think regular women can actually relate to this, unfortunately. I will say that it's quite manageable to alleviate these symptoms. And I really hope that you've learned something today. And you're always welcome to ask me any questions about this. Thank you all for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. If you want to support my work, my PayPal is in the description down below, but no pressure whatsoever, because I'm already super grateful for all of you. Remember, you can become a member of this channel. We have so much fun, so come join us. Follow me on Twitter and Rumble, and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace out.